Hello there, Matt here with 5280 Armory. I'm finally going to get a chance to work with the new Smith & Wesson FPC carving. First couple units that we had, we had to let go due to a special order. So now it's my turn. So let's take a look and see what's inside the box. Well, that's good news. We do have a soft case inside the cardboard box. It's got D-rings that I can see right away. We could use these D-rings to attach extra equipment or attach this bag to our other shooting equipment. It's got carry handles and it looks like it's got a good size heavy duty zipper. Okay, on the inside, looks like they really did a good job fitting this weapon. Not a whole lot of space on either side. They gave us Velcro straps to hold this in place so it doesn't move around. On the other side, we've got one, two, three, four good size pockets for cleaning kit, extra mags, ammunition, whatever you need to take with you. Compared to the Keltec Sub 2000, this soft case is a definite improvement over the cardboard box. When it's in its folded position, Looks like it's under 17 inches, somewhere in that ballpark, 16 and a half. To get it unfolded, we'll use this lever right here. And this is kind of stiff, feels kind of gritty. Once we've got it locked in position, we're looking at a total overall length of under 31, oh, something close to 30 and 5 eighths, somewhere in that ballpark. At first glance on this buttstock, you're probably tempted to think that this uh, might be retractable or adjustable with this button here on the bottom and this recoil tube that looks like an AR-15. Smith & Wesson refers to this in the manual as the receiver tube. After messing around with it for just a little bit, you quickly figure out that the stock does not move. What Smith & Wesson has cleverly done is engineered some magazine storage back here towards the the back inside the stock, and this ends up being the mag release. The center button is for disassembly. Let's take a look at how this magazine storage works. I can tell by looking at the shape of the opening that it's tapered down at the bottom of the, the stock. Therefore, if I try to put it in the wrong way, it's probably not going to go in, and it doesn't. So I've got to turn it around. Locks right into place. You would think that the magazine release would be on the side that the mag is on. As it turns out, it's on the opposite side. So if I press this side, it won't come out. Press on the opposite side and it will release. When you pull the magazine away from the stock, there's not a lot of room to work with there. You do have to turn the magazine around to get it to insert properly into the mag well. Now, if I could have, I probably would have done it differently. So when I grabbed the mag, it would have already been righted to go right into the mag well. But then again, where would they have put the magazine release on the top, the side, how would they have done that? So I see why they did what they did. The buttstock has the look of, a, of an M4, you know, modified a bit, but it is flared out here for a nice cheek weld. I like that. That's always a little bit more comfortable. And on the back, we've got a QD slot here for a sling mount. Forward of the stock, we have the ambidextrous charging handle. It also doubles as a locking mechanism for the front end as it's folded over, this catches into one of the M-lock slots. I must say though, I sure hope this breaks in. It's awfully stiff and gritty. The receiver tube mounts into the cylindrical portion of the frame back here that's made out of polymer. There's a total of six total screws. Not sure exactly what that's for at the moment. Maybe it has something to do with disassembly. We'll take a look at that later in a video when we take it apart. The pistol grip is identical to the M2.0 in texture and removable back strap. The magazine release is in the same spot. It's reversible. This is also the compact in size. When you pull this out, you notice it's got a 17 round mag in it, but they did do the spacer to cover the gap. That's because once again, it's a compact size grip. Where the trigger guard meets the front strap, it's undercut. A lot of people like this, and I do too. I think it's more comfortable. Inside the trigger guard itself is going to be a large enough opening for smaller gloves. And right here at the front is a really large button. Turns out that's a safety. Very audible, very tactile. You can feel it. It's just large enough that with my index, my shooting finger, I can reach up and hit it without adjusting my grip. The flat face trigger and the wider trigger safety appear to be identical to the competitor model that we worked with just a couple of months ago. However, I think that's where we'll stop the comparison because when you try the trigger on this one, it leaves 
a little bit to be desired. If there's an aftermarket trigger coming, I'm pretty sure it's going to be popular. Up above the trigger, you're going to find the ambidextrous bolt catch. What's interesting is on the right side, that bolt catch is in the opening of the ejection port. So be careful not to get too much of your finger in there when you're releasing that on an open bolt. And when that bolt slams forward, if you got too much finger in there, it's probably going to hurt like hell and you won't do it twice. The bolt itself is made out of stainless steel. It operates on a simple, reliable blowback principle. And not to kick a dead horse, but this carbine could use a pretty good break in. Right in front of the bolt, you're going to find two knuckles, one on the right, one on the left. The knuckle on the right side is going to house the release mechanism to fold the carbine, and the one on the left is going to house the hinge when the barrel is folded over. The polymer forend is 12 inches long with Picatinny rail running the whole length. It's got plenty of M-lock slots at the 3, 6, and 9 position, and if that's not enough, we've also got 1, 5, 7, and 11. There is no provision for a QD like at the back, so you have to buy an extra accessory if you want the QD attachment front and rear. The barrel is just over 16 inches long. It's got half by 28 threads. They did supply a thread protector. That half by 28 selection was excellent. That is the most common size, and that's going to make finding accessories like muzzle brakes and suppressors easy. It's going to be a quick match. One quick point though, when the carving is in its folded position and locked into place, you'll notice that the space in between the two is awfully thin. I think that's going to rule out most suppressors to allow it to have the suppressor on and it folded and locked at the same time. On the other hand, even though this carbine may not fold and lock with most suppressors mounted, they definitely hit a home run with the side folding design. Compared to the kel Sub-2000, when it has an optic mounted, you try to do the top folding design of a kel and obviously it won't close. With this side folding design on the Smith & Wesson, there's no need to remove your optic because there's nothing to get in the way, so it's fine. You can leave it and it stays in its folded position with the optic on. Now because this Picatinny rail doesn't extend much past the front of this bolt area here, that means you're going to have to use a non-magnified optic like a red dot, and that's probably what most people are going to do. If you want magnification though, you're going to have to go with like a scout style or a pistol scope that has that long eye relief. Now, I might suggest to Smith & Wesson a little length of Picatinny rail back here at the same height. That way I could uh, have flip-ups front and rear. That would be nice. This package comes with one 17-round mag and two 23-round mags. And on that note, it's time for me to go shoot this FPC carbine to see what I think. We're going to have it for rent and for sale down here at the shop. So come on down and take a look. 5280 Armory, Colorado's Gun Shop. We'll see you soon. Hey, and don't forget, if you like watching videos about firearms and supporting your Second Amendment, or you're from another country in which you had a Second Amendment, do us a big favor. Hit that subscribe button so we can keep this channel going. And thanks for watching.